In this next set of videos, we'll review the highlights of Chapter 3, Pre-Planning, from Using GIS for Wildland Search and Rescue. I'll outline the best practices for creating a consistent file structure, establishing naming conventions for your files, show you where to obtain GIS data for free, and finally, suggest how to obtain the data for a minimum essential data set. Whether you're a recreational user collecting GPS records from your mountain bike or hiking trips, or an emergency services responder required to keep data for later review, training, or possible legal questions, it's critical that you think about and establish a consistent folder structure and naming conventions ahead of getting or creating that data. It may not sound all that exciting, and bad news, it really isn't. But if you don't, your files will likely end up scattered everywhere, and without a good naming convention, you'll have no idea what's in a particular file. When I started storing GS files over 15 years ago, I had no real plan. Stuff ended up scattered all over my directory, depending on what made sense at the time. As I created and used more files, I realized I needed a better folder structure and, especially, naming convention so I'd know what was where and exactly what the file was. Unfortunately, once you link a file to an active project, changing the folder or name creates a headache because, to work, it's got to have that same name and location. Not to beat this into the ground, but you'll save yourself a huge amount of problems in the future by understanding and setting this stuff up right the first time. Let's look at folder structure. This will be a permanent set of folders you'll set up ahead of time to put your base data, such as topo maps, trail, and stream files, as well as anything you create, such as your GPS track logs or maps you make. A logical folder structure ensures not only you, but others will be able to figure out where the file they need are. The good news is much of the work for both folder structure and naming conventions has been done by the GIS Fire community. In Search and Rescue, our work group has adapted many of their conventions to our needs. It's not absolutely necessary you or your organization adopt the same standards we have. Your needs might be different. But it is critical you establish a consistent structure and stick to it from the beginning. Let's look at what we've done and you can start thinking about adapting it to your needs. MAPSAR is the tool our SAR and GIS group work group has created to work with ArcGIS 10. It automates many of the tasks involved in a SAR. When you don't download MAPSAR, it unzips into both the tools to use and the folder structure it works with. It also includes text files suggesting naming conventions and an Excel file that automates the task of naming a number of file types. For this class, I've provided a stripped-down version of the MAPSAR folders and taken out the tools and other assorted files, leaving only the em empty folders. For this demonstration, I've named the top-level folder GIS Data. You'll probably want something similar on your C drive or wherever your GIS data will live. Under that, you can see we've got a backups folder for backing up your active files. And very importantly, we've got a base data folder. One of This is going to be one of the most important folders you'll want. This is where you keep all your acquired maps, such as DEMs, DEMs, or digital elevation models. Um, here is a logo uh, file for your agency's logo, which is used in MAPSAR. And uh, ortho imagery, this will be satellite photos. Uh, other maps uh, for other stuff that doesn't fit under a category. And topo maps, uh, these are sometimes called DRGs, or di digital raster graphics. And finally, we have vector data, which is spatial information consisting of points, lines, or polygons. So vector files are information like lakes, which are polygons, streams or trails, which are lines, or buildings, which are points. A GPS track log, which would be under this folder, uh, could also be a point or a line, depending on how it's converted. We've kept a documents folder here uh, for any documents you may have referring to uh, uh, any of your emergency operations or even as a recreational user you might find this useful. Uh, an export folder um, for anything you create um, and, and want to export uh, in another file type. And then we've maintained incident data. Um, you can change this to personal data, uh, but we've kept the name for this demonstration uh, for SAR or emergency operation. 
and under that would go your GPS files, your modified base data. Um, quite often you'll find that you just want a part of a map or a part of a satellite uh, image and obviously you don't want to edit the original image or you'll lose that. So, so when you do change an original file you put it here under modified base data. Uh, photos associated with uh, your GPS track logs or your incident um, and it's also possible now to uh, geolocate those photos so they can be associated with an actual point. Uh, finally your products uh, this is your output for instance your uh, PDF maps you make from your from your data and we suggest a daily folder for incidents uh, year year a year, a month, and day, and you create a new folder for each day of an operation, um, and any final maps you may make on an incident. Um, but you can modify this if you're a recreation user. Uh, you may uh, find a better way of organizing products, um, but but essentially this is just going to be your your output uh, maps and anything you create from all of your data. And then your projects folder is going to be where uh, you keep the, the project file. So if you open an incident or a map in ArcGIS Explorer or in ArcGIS 10, uh, you'd save the, that project um, to your central projects folder. So when you're setting up folder structure, there are other considerations if, for instance, you're working within a network. There's a tendency to want to keep your work on your personal office computer. However, if your work is important to the agency or your work group, you want others to not only know where it is, but have access to it. So you might want all data at a central network location and available to everyone. Depending on the type of data, you could put personal data in your own restricted network folder and the rest in common folders, perhaps only available to your work group. In any event, talk this over with your IT person and work group to decide on the level of security and access you want. The next video in this pre-planning series will be on file naming conventions.